What's going on, world? Welcome to another edition of the Black Mental Health Podcast. I'm your host, Reg. Joined today with me is a few guests. Uh, I have two guests coming on. Um, I'll introduce them when the time being. Um, but uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, the support for everything is overwhelming. I like that uh, everyone's been subscribing. They've been sharing. They've been showing love. They've been doing everything possible to uh, make sure that the information on this platform gets shared with their audiences, as well as just making uh, my brand known so that we can break, continue to, I hate saying it, but breaking the stigma about mental health and stuff that's going on in the Black community. So I humbly and gratefully appreciate it. And um, thank you, thank you. So keep subscribing because it, it, it lets me bring on guests and keep everyone uh, coming on and supporting the podcast as much as possible. But today, um, I am going to talk about my newly released book, Suffering Into Success. Um, and I wanted to share the journey because it's a part of something that I was going through mentally uh, by myself, really, uh, with help, but by myself. I didn't know too many authors uh, growing up or around now. Like, I don't really know too many authors personally. Like, I know uh, people who wrote books, but I don't know people personally that I can, that they went through the step-by-step -step process that I watched them grow, whatever the case may be. So I wanted to share my mental health, my mental journey on how I became an author and the things that I had to go to because people see the end result and, and they'll say congrats and um, so proud of you and um, you're, you're great. All the good things that comes with you when you become an author, you get an accomplishment done. But for me now, um, I think it's time to share the journey. The book's been out about a month from now, it can't, uh, debuted on November 18th. Um, go get your copy. And I thought it would be good to share that experience with others, especially authors and people that just go through struggles. Um, and again, this platform has always been about like talking about mental struggles in our community, not so much depression, uh, anxiety, um, anything like that. Um, we, we dive a lot on them topics, but um, it's just everyday struggles that we all go through, no pun intended to the show that's out. Um, it's a lot of struggles that we go through every day and they mentally affect, the, affect us and they can lead to depression, they can lead to anxiety, they can lead to all suicide attempts and stuff like that. And my journey is no separate than any. So as I was doing this podcast, I went through so many struggles with this book. This podcast is about six months old. Um, but among this book has been and fruition um, for a while. And uh, I guess we can get right into where where the idea began and where it started. So back in, hold on, I'm gonna make sure I get you guys the correct information. I got uh, notes and everything. Um, hold on one second. Okay, so I wanted to make sure I pulled up the article that, um, um, that inspired the title behind uh, the name. So um, for those who, who, of you who don't know, I am a quote, random name, uh, just overall collector of like phrases and stuff. Like I'll hear a word, I'll hear a quote, I'll hear somebody say something or they put two words together that I never heard before and I'll write it down. So I have a big, huge notebook. I have a big, huge document. I have a, I have like literally stuff in my phone, random names, random quotes, everything in my phone, phrases, undeveloped concepts that I just automatically write down. And um, I don't know when I'm gonna use them per se, but I know that it's something that may come up in the future. So I randomly write down names. So at one particular period, I was, um, in about 2013, I think, hold on, let me make sure, let me give you guys the correct In about 2013, um, the DJ Khaled um, artist, you guys know him, he's very motivational on social media and stuff like that. Um, he had an album called uh, Suffering From Success. And where he got that name of that title from, and I'm quoting him from a, a Wikipedia article, he said, we had just got done turning in Rick Ross's album and you don't realize, and people don't realize 
when you turn the album in, it's a lot of work behind the scenes from clearing records, dealing with lawyers, sample clearances, mix and max, during, um, marketing plan, et cetera, et cetera. At that time, I was running around and I noticed a big bald spot on my beard that kept getting bigger and bigger. I'm acting like I don't want to see it. I'm brushing it away and, I, and it keep getting bigger and bigger. So when I finally got off, I got home off the road, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to the doctors. I don't like going to doctors, so I go. And she's like, it's a disorder that comes from your nerves and your stress. But she said, I'm going to give you medication and I'll see you back in four months. Through that whole process, while I'm at the doctor's office, my phone is ringing. I'm dealing with marketing people. I'm dealing with lawyers. I'm dealing with Rick Ross, rapper Rick Ross. I'm dealing with personal stuff, a whole bunch of stuff at the same time. It didn't stop. She thinking I'm crazy. So she gave me my medicine and all that. And she found out who I was. Um, and after watching the 45 minute doctor's session, she grabbed my shoulder and she just goes, son, you're suffering from success. I looked at her and was like, that might be the realest thing you could tell me. Um, and it opened up, it opened my mind up like success comes with stress and happiness. So I'm driving home from the doctor's office and I'm like, that's going to be the name for my new album, Suffering From Success. So I heard their title and I was like, that's an amazing title. And, and once I heard the concept, well, I was like, oh, I, I, I like that. But I wasn't successful at the time. <laughs> I'm not even successful now in my eyes. So I heard the concept and I'm like, well, what's my version of that? What's my version of the feeling that he's getting inside when as he's going through all the process like um and when you guys uh get my book it, it, it tells some of the things that i went through to get to the certain points that i'm at today so um which to me is very small because i'm still working i have like so many goals that i want to accomplish but i'm not ungrateful I, I'm, I'm still cognizant of the fact that i'm a lot further than i was um but um, so I went to start thinking like what's my version from it and I came up with the concept of suffering into success because we're all going on our journey to get whatever success is for us which is maybe happiness and maybe a nice car maybe um, beautiful family whatever the case may be so it's just up to you to decide that but again um, my version of that was suffering into success um, so the name sounded good so I was like, all right, I'm going to hold on to it. I never had a book concept. I knew I wanted to write a book. I never even knew that was going to be a book in itself. But the name itself, I knew I was going to use it for something. That's why I just write them randomly down because I don't know what they're ever going to be used for. They could be used for uh, business names. They could be used for uh, concepts when I'm speaking. They could be used for podcast topics. They could be used so, for so many things. So I just write them down and just have them in the, in the, um, in the vault <laughs> that I call it for further use. Um, so long, fast forward to 2016, I decided that it was time for me to write a book. Um, and I didn't know what I wanted to write about, but I knew that I needed, not needed, but I wanted to be an author. So I decided to start thinking of concepts and I didn't have anything, honestly. I knew I wanted to write about success, but I didn't really have what I wanted to write about. And so I don't want to give too much of the book away, but long story short, I went through a horrible experience with my mother in 2016. And to not give away the book, uh, the book, the situation with my mother gave the concept behind the book. And I now had the, I wanted to talk about success. I now had the crux of the book, something that can, the overlasting, the overlying storyline of the book that I can dive into. And now I just needed to put pen to paper. I need to get it out of my head, out of my mind, out onto actual physically making it manifest. So I start jotting down ideas. I start writing. I start getting the book out, actually out of my mind and brainstorming and stuff like that. And of course, after a while, not after a while, when you start anything new, you begin to have self doubt. You begin to have things going on. And mind you, I'm still going through regular stuff. I'm still having to be able to move. I'm still having to be a father. I'm still having to be a, a fiance. I'm still having to be just a person that that 
you you're becoming an author, but you also have all of these other balancing acts that you need to have. So I I am balancing all of the regular life as well as trying to become an author. And mind you, you need a uh to all you future authors out there, you need to be able to have a nice quiet uh space, a nice quiet area, nice set out time where you can sit down and record. But 2013 is 2018, and that was five years ago. Um, I mean, no, that was when I got the concept. 2016 was two years ago, and I had my son is he just turned six, so I had a three year old turning four, and I was trying to write this content, write this book. So he's still getting up, he still needs to be nurtured to, catered to, and stuff like that. So it was hard. I'm not gonna sit here and say sit here and act like it be easy. I would quit at times. I would um, be stressed, like, because I never wrote a book before. I never had no one show me and sit down and write a book. So it was stressful. And seeking out help and seeking out advice um, from people that couldn't provide answers because they never been in that predicament. I said earlier that um, I never had any authors that I knew personally where I can, they can sit with me. Um, I'm sure I could have taken a class, sure I could have paid someone, but. I'm a big component, of, a big believer of, you can kind of Google, Google can be your best friend, YouTube can be your best friend, you can kind of figure out a lot of things on your own before seeking that that outside help. And of course, like eventually you want to get to that point where you're um, comfortable asking people for help, but um, I, I wanted, there was something, a task that I wanted to make sure I accomplished on my own. But uh, long story short, I quit, I quit, I stopped. Um, it just wasn't working for me. I was stressed out. I couldn't handle it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to stop. But one thing I want to impress everybody out there um, mentally, you you go through your, 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 your past, your future, your present, stuff in your, in your life will remind you of who you are. It'll continually to haunt you. It'll continually to follow you, continually to nag at you like, as much as I would have accomplished or done anything in this world, the fact that I wasn't an author would have always sat with me. It would have always haunted me. For, it's like, I, cause I honestly, one of the mental struggles that I had is I would read some of the books out here and shout out to everyone who actually wrote a book and they took the time out to make sure it happened. But I would actually sit down and read some of these people's books. And I'm like, dude, if they like this, then they're going to love my book. And, but it didn't matter because they had taken out the energy and they took it out the stuff to write the actual book. So they were automatically better than whatever book that I attempted to write. Um, so I had to make sure I keep putting myself, like it was haunting me. It was haunting me the fact that I wasn't an author. It was haunting me that I kept saying, y'all I was writing a book or I'm about to write a book or it's going to happen soon. It was haunting me that, um, I just knew I could, I had more within me and it was, it was set me into a, a little me, a, a mild depression knowing that I could write a book, but I didn't have it. Like it was, it was messing with me mentally. So, um, I would pick it back up, start it, go through the struggles. Um, and one of the things that I encourage, um, all future authors to do is to make sure you know what you're doing. Like talk to, uh, try to reach out to an author before you, like someone who as close as you can get to um, and get and pick their brain to figure out what it is that they know about becoming an author. Um, one of the things that I can say I did was I reached out to, um, hold on, let me make sure, uh, one of our past guests, Alexis, Ro Alexis Rhodes, uh, Dr. Alexis Rhodes, and go grab her book. Um, it's called The Road to Success. <laughs> it's, fun it's funny because it plays off her name. But um, I reached out to her, and we went to school together. If you guys haven't seen the episode, okay, go check it out if you have some time. Um, we went to school together, and so I reached out to her, and she was like, uh, well, it's easy. And she was like, all right, well, you already wrote a book. I can get you an editor. She started giving me pointers. So she sent me to the editor, um, one of her friends. And honestly, I was unhappy with uh, the the – results and I was I'll, I'll get to that part I was unhappy with the results with it so I, I quit I was unhappy with the results I didn't like it I quit it, it stopped me again it stopped me again um because I didn't like the results that I was getting 
So it stopped me again, and I wind up not touching that book for months. And again, it started nagging me, it started nagging me. So I wound up picking up again. And what I didn't like about it was it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. And we'll get in more into that again. So I pick it up again and I start reaching out to my close friends and I'm like, do you guys know an editor or, or I wasn't asking the right questions. So I was always going to get mentally let down because I wasn't asking the right questions. And we'll talk more further with that when I bring my guests on. But I was always going to be uh, upset with the results. And you have to realize sometimes how bad do you really want something like you can say you want to be something. You can say that it'll be nice to have. You can say that, like, you would love to be anything, but it, when it's come, come down to it, do you really want to do put in the work? Do you really Are you really dedicated for it to happen? So I try again. I try again. My friend reached out. I got an editor from her, uh, from him, and it was another, uh, another young lady. She did it. She, she did it, her job, and, again, I didn't like what I was getting. I didn't like what I was getting. Um, so I didn't like what I was getting and I quit again. I reached out, I, I quit again. It started haunting me again. I get another editor. Matter of fact, I don't even get an editor. I, my friend asked me, yo, what's going on with your book? I'm like, I don't know, man. I keep asking editors to edit my book. It's not coming out the way I want it to come out. Like I'm, I'm done, like forget it, whatever the case may be. So my, one of my closest friends, he was like, uh, actually I'll tell you who it was, it was Jabril Hart. He was on episode two or three, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and he, ed he was editing for a while. And again, I didn't get what I want. It wasn't what I wanted and it made me quit again. And mind you, this is all in a span of 2016, between now, last, from November 2016, when I actually started writing, and up till now, November 18th, I'm at November 2018. And just keep going through the mental struggles, quitting again, quitting again. And um, so I finally picked up, and now fast forward to the start of this podcast, which is about June of this year. And I having amount of success with this podcast i'm having some 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 traction people are requesting me to do stuff and all of that stuff but i did not want to do anything without be saying that i am an author that i am uh, a person of who, who wrote a book that everyone loves like i it just didn't feel right so i was like all right uh long story short i'm going to take a month off from this podcast so if you see from november to um, or for the end of October to early of, of December, I didn't put out a podcast, and it wasn't because I was. In, I had podcasts waiting. I was. I could have been consistent with the podcast, but I didn't feel right not getting this monkey off my back. And um, so I just took a month off and said, you know what, Reg, I'm gonna finish this. Like, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this and get this what get this done the way I wanted to get done, and and I got it done, and so. So I decided that um, I was going to start a finish, and I finished, and I got I, I got it to the to the part where it was like I, I'm done perfecting it. Like if I keep on tweaking it, it's never going to come out. Like I'm done. So now it was like, all right, Reg, what are you going to do? And um, what are you going to do? And I decided that I was going to go with a, a guy that reached out. Now, I'll make this disclaimer right now, guys. I'm gonna play a clip. I'm gonna play a clip, and it's from somebody. And if, if this video goes down, the audio I can fix, but if this video goes down, know that I probably got in trouble or something, and because I wasn't supposed to be recording this. But, so I, could, I decided, a guy, a person that came on my podcast, I won't put their name out there, a person that came on my podcast, they uh, recommended me to someone that they feel like could help me. And uh, all right, I got it. They recommended to me to someone and they figured that that person could help guide me to get in my book out there, getting on different platforms and stuff like that. So uh, reach out to, they, we talking about July. I said, I'm not ready yet. Like I'm, I'm finishing up. I finished up about September, October, 
Um, and I call, I give the, I give the guy a call. I give the person a call. Oops. <laughs> I give the person a call and ah, man, give that person a call. I talk to the guy. He sounds like a nice guy. Nice guy, man. Nice guy. Um, did my research. He, he did, he got, he got, he got some leg room in the game. And from what I thought, and mind you, it was me having a bad feeling, but still going with it. It was still trusting the fact that someone recommended him, still trusting that my research that I go through everything um, thoroughly to understand who he was as a person. And so I wound up trusting the guy, I sent him over some money um, to start doing my stuff. And then um, I'll put the tweets in here as well um, because it's still some stuff that I probably don't want to, I can't remember all the way, but I'll put the tweets up. But um, I wound up just not hearing from him after I sent the money. <laughs> I sent him the money. It was all, I could reach him all up until the point of uh, me sending him the money. I sent him money. Um, and this dude <laughs> did just was, I, I contacted him on Facebook. I contacted him on uh, my cell phone, email. Um, all of a sudden, I got one email from his quote unquote secretary, and all of before I can get straight to him. And I'm like, what's up with this dude? So I'm calling the person that recommended him or texting him, like, yo, I didn't hear from this person. Like, what's going on? What's going on? She's like, well, I just heard from him. And I'm like, so he's talking to you, but he's ignoring me. And mind you, we're in the same city. So, well, not the guy. I don't know where he lives at. Still, this is that. I don't know where he lives at. Um, but again, trusting the, the person that uh, introduced me or referred. So I introduced this guy. Um, I mean, this guy, I, I never hear from him. He took the, he, he, he just got my money. He, luckily, I'll say this, luckily, and maybe God on my side to teach me the, the lesson that I needed to uh, learn early was stop being so trusting. And mind you, I'm trusting this guy because he's an older gentleman. He, I feel like he has some skin in the game. He's been experienced. He, he just pretty much knows what's going on in, in the industry. And mind you, I'm, I'm green. Like, I'm young coming into this naive, don't know what's going on. So, and especially what, what, what messed me up was that it's an older black man. And for him to steal money from me, like, nah. So, and mind you, you could be old black, you could be young white, you could be Greek and Chinese, Indian. It's bad people out there. It's good people, but they're bad people out there. So, I wanted to send it. Uh, trying to contact me. He was not getting in contact with me. So finally, he winds up reaching out to me saying, oh, I want to talk. And I'm like, I, I don't want to talk at this point. I just want my money back. And I, luckily I didn't. I don't know if I explained. Luckily, I didn't send up my book when I sent him the money. So I, had, I still had my product. I still had my idea. Um, and for all you future people, you'll get stuff on paper, get stuff on contract. So that way, if any future stuff come up, you don't have to go through any legal thing. Luckily, I'm not going any legal thing. So I wound up uh, getting on the phone with him and we just started arguing. He started blaming me saying, oh, I don't know how the industry works. I don't know how uh, this stuff process. Oh, I get, he's like, I usually charge this fee and you gave me this little bit of money and um, you gave me this little bit of money and I could spend that in the day. And I'm like, well, if you can spend that in a day, spend it back on me. Spend me my money back. And he just was just like, <laughs> just trying to put it on me. And I'm, the clip I'm about to play is from the, a part of the conversation. Again, if I cut this part out, guys, it's because these people contacted me and they wanted me to get rid of it or whatever. Hopefully, maybe he never heard this. Maybe, because in my eyes to this day, I don't know if he, he used that money to actually do what he said he was going to do. Like he used that money to quote unquote, look at my background and make sure I was good or whatever the case may be, and so I still don't know, and maybe he'll re hear this and reach out and tell me what's going on. I was just done pursuing it, but let me play the clip for you guys so that way you can hear part of the conversation that happened. Now, you guys, you hear me laughing, and uh, if you guys watch my first episode, I, I say that a lot of times to avoid for me getting angry and stuff, I, I tend to laugh and not take it serious, because if I take it too serious, then it's going to go too far. And to avoid getting myself in that angry state, 
um, I try to make sure that I, a lot of these things I don't get too upset about. But here you go. I don't even got it. I don't, I don't even understand how much you got this free mentality. People here. Oh, they, 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 ain't no such thing as free money. Now, he's saying I got a free mentality after I just gave him money. If I wanted free, I wouldn't have paid you. I would have said, can you look out? Like, I gave him money so that you can do work. <laughs> but whatever. I just want my money back. <laughs> He, he never sent the lawyer, by the way, because he has no grounds for anything. It's okay. I got I got people at NBC, too. You, too. Thanks for stealing my money. Thanks for being a thief. And that was pretty much it, guys. So, um, took the money. So, now, mind you, I'm having terrible headaches, terrible migraines, because I want to Honestly, to be honest, I want to kill this guy, but I can't put my hands on it because I'm trying to be better me and I'm trying to learn better. I'm trying to do better as a person, as an individual. So I want to hurt this guy, but I can't do nothing about him. But even still, mind you, I told you I'm doing regular life. I got a family. I got a fiance. I got every a, a bill to to pay. I can't be just gambling with high amounts, a high sums amount of money like that, and to be just losing like that, of course you're going to have losses and, and of course you got to invest in yourself and you got to gamble, but it just hurt me a little bit more knowing it came from a black man, just knowing it came from somebody that you trust, that you talk in, and you were set up almost, because I still don't know what part she played into it, by a black woman, and I, I just don't know, and it was just messing with me mentally where I was just having these terrible migraines. Again, I'm going to put the tweets up and you guys can see that it was just affect, affecting me emotionally, and Luckily, I had some people in the industry start reaching out. And now that brings me to my first guest. Um, and I'll insert her in, in a few. Um, but it's an amazing individual, amazing guest that came on before. And she was able to help me and look out for me. And man, this girl's been a blessing. Um, I'm going to introduce her in a second. Um, hold on one second, guys. Now you guys have probably seen from the screen that we have our, fir our, our first guest. I told you guys I have two guests on, and um, she's a repeat guest, our first ever repeat guest, and just having her on is a fun right, 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 it's a <laughs> monumental moment, um, and please guys, go check out her episode, she, she dropped a very, a, a, a lot of gems on there, we talked a lot about stuff on there, um, so go with, I'll put the link in the description, but um, my favorite person in the world from this year. <laughs> she she brought me back from the slums. Like you guys just heard the story I shared about the guy. Um, she'll dive in from her perspective on how like she felt about it. Miss Debbie London. Hello. All right. I'm glad to be here again. Before we get into the actual story, just remind people, I guess, about like what you do and like who you are and a little bit of bio about yourself. Okay, I am, um, first and foremost, I am a self-help author. Uh, I have two books that are out. One is about generational curses and soul ties, and the other is about relationship red flags. And my next book that's coming out next year mm -hmm. is going to be about unlocking all things spirituality. And I'm, I'm so excited about this next book. Man, it's going to, look, it's blowing my mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm writing it as I'm gathering the content for it. So mm -hmm. I'm just really excited about that one. Um, but my main purpose in life is to help others heal, mm. um, get them to see the things <laughs> that they need to see so that they can uproot whatever may be holding them back so that they can move forward in peace. And that could be in peace in their purpose, in their relationships, in their life, within their family. I am all about healing. Um, which is why I am also a healing and clarity coach. And I am also a self-publishing consultant. And like with Reggie, I help other people 
get their books done and tell their stories because they're extremely important. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, my tagline is transforming with transparency. Uh, for whoever wants to go to my Instagram page or read my blogs, you will see, oh my God, this girl just <laughs> says whatever she wants and <laughs> however it comes to mind. And I just believe that being transparent um, is most helpful to people because they can't uh, receive what they need from somebody who's being fake. That that doesn't help anyone if you're being fake. Being real, being authentic, and just letting people know how it is, good, bad, or indifferent, mm -hmm. I feel that's the way to also help people. So everything about me is going to be transparent. My books, anything I touch, anytime I'm dealing with anybody, that's how I roll, and it's most effective. So. And in a nutshell, that is me. Now, um, we would need a whole nother podcast to talk about the stuff that she had to go through with me with getting my book out. Like, it was so much stuff. But um, when I first uh, reached out, even after our podcast uh, from the interview that we did, um, and you can say whatever you want as far as from your perspective, but when I told you about the fact that I wanted to write a book or that I was finishing up my book, um, you offer some insight and you, from your perspective, like what was uh, your viewpoint on what was like, what was about to happen or what we were about to do? What was my viewpoint on like um, taking on the task of yes. working together? Yes. Um, it excites me mm -hmm. when other people are stepping out on faith to tell their stories. So honestly, anytime I have a client or somebody that gets my workshop, like, it really just ignites that fire or, you know, just sets it ablaze. And so I'm like, yes, somebody else is about to, you know, step out and give people what they need because um, I truly believe that everybody's story matters. If you are called to write, your story is meant not for you, but for those it is meant to serve. And that's fiction or nonfiction. And we do a disservice when we keep that story bottled in. So as far as our process, I was like, bring it on. <laughs> like I am with everybody else. I find it very, very um, exciting. And when you said like we would need a whole other uh, podcast to talk about everything that we endure, honestly, Reg, like that's how everybody feels. Right. You know, that everybody, I had a meetup yesterday down here in Atlanta. And it was just kind of like a meet and greet before um, I start my workshop series, just biting it off in chunks for people that are kind of pacing themselves and we meet once a month or whatever. And the same things, the same, the same things from these writers, fear, you know, uh, second guessing. I don't know, I'm not across the board. And that's why so many books, you know, go to the grave with people or whatever. So honestly, I just commended you for being willing and being hungry and being ready, you know, to step out because everybody can't do it. Because if everybody could, everybody would have a book out. That's true. And before, um, to piggyback off the conversation that um, I was having about the guy, um, when I told you that I wanted to write a book, you told me about your services or whatever the case may be. I decided to go a different route. I decided that I wanted to go with this guy and the guys, we, we talk, uh, you guys heard the story earlier. Um, and when I brought the idea to you, the first thing you say you said to me was, well, what is he doing that you can't do yourself? <laughs> <laughs> and she made me befuzzled. And I'm like, um, I had to call him back. Like, um, now I was talking to a few self uh, authors and and she and he was like, uh, well, I offer this, 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 and this. And then when I was telling you, you was like, yeah, that's, uh, that's all right. But it's not really nothing spectacular and so i went back i still trusted him and mind you i reached out to her and the guys i put the audio in that i put i sent her the audio that you guys just heard and what was your first thought when you heard that audio that i sent from the guy i wasn't shocked only because in our conversation um i think one of the main blaring red flags so it's okay to pay somebody um to do things for you in the self-publishing process like that's what i do i assist people with the process but as soon as somebody says i'm gonna make you huge or i'm gonna make you a best-selling red 
flag, star, you know, I just got to raise my eyebrows with that. Like, what do you mean you can make somebody so, you know, a, a best-selling author? I don't know. I just feel like that scream scam. And that's why I don't ever promise it. And what I do, I help you get it done. As self-published authors, we have the uh, responsibility of the marketing. That's why, you know, the difference between traditional and self-publishing, that's the main thing. If you have a publishing company behind you, they're going to do the pushing and the marketing and things like that. As a self-published author, you get to kind of bypass all the waiting and being accepted and if they're going to like it. And you get to keep your voice, which is very important to me Um, because I want to say whatever the hell I want to say. Like, I want to keep my voice in my writing because I don't want somebody to go, oh, say this and do this. It's just... And, and like I've been seeing the reviews for your book, it's been speaking to people. Why? Because we maintain the integrity of your voice the entire time. You know, and I feel that that's so important as a self-published author. But like I was saying, the marketing piece is what rests on our shoulders. And if they aren't a marketing agency or public relations or anything like that, I'm raising my eyebrow. And, and when I heard that recording, I was like, scam like I just I, I knew it and then remember you and I talked with Paul I was like I don't know how I feel about him Reg and it was just vibe and I was like I don't know how I feel like ask him what else you know and that's why I'm like hey ask him what it is he's offering what is it that he um is telling you that he's gonna do for you because something just did not click because when I told you what I could do for you I was able to boom 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 this is what we're gonna do this is gonna be process this is the timeline we were always in constant communication whether um, something would be expedited as far as what you were getting or if there was a delay, we were in constant communication. And with him, it was like everything was very vague and nothing was really for sure certain and there was no real details about what was going on. So when I when I got the recording, I was like... Because <laughs> you already questioned it. once Because um, before, let me backtrack, before I actually decided to go with him, it was either go with that being her program, or it was to go with him and his program and what he said he can do. It was like, all right, I'm pretty much, because Debbie brings you from, um, like, idea to physical copy. Let me bring it out because I have it right next to me, too. Physical copy in your hand. Like, she got this to this. Um, I had already had it on paper, um, so I was kind of midway in the process, but I couldn't get it a physical copy. And so I was like, all right, I can, I can probably do the physical form by myself um and he can do the marketing portion and whatever he said he was going to do and it wound up like she said being a scam like he was wound up being like just overly just like overselling and under delivering and um so i wound up having to come back to her not even not even come back because i'll give you the credit to that i just was posting on social media like yo i'm messed up like this dude took this money like Da, 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 da. And like I said, I posted tweets or whatever, and you reached out to me. And yeah. I guess sort of what was the mindset behind that and like your 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 viewpoint on what you were doing? Like it wasn't like a I told you so. I told you he was gonna steal him. <laughs> oh no. Oh no, 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 no. I again everything I do is about helping people and being of service to others. And when I saw what you post, I was like, dang, like this is what I do anyway. And we had already had a rapport, you know, and a bit of a relationship established for me being on your podcast previously. I'm like, yo, Reg, I know you feel very burned right now, but trust me, you know, let me, let's go ahead and get this baby be done. Let's, let's, let's give birth to this baby. I know you may be hesitant, but just, just trust me with it. And my main thing going into that was um, he's scarred right now. And I think like in one of our conversations, I was like, you have, you definitely have PTSD right now, <laughs> like book PTSD from all the things that you've gone through. But it also spoke to me in that what I am doing is important for aspiring authors as well, because you went through a lot of twists and turns with several editors and, um, by reaching out to many people to do this thing. And I have basically tried to simplify the process as much as possible and just do all meat and no bones. So there is no runaround. When the expectation is set, it's like, we are going to bring this thing, you know, to fruition. Um, there was never a time where I wasn't available to talk things through with Reggie via email or whatever um, was necessary at the time. So I just went in with the mind of, I don't want him to give up on this book because, you know, he's messed around with the wrong people uh, or didn't 
wasn't sure of what he needed to bring it forth. Uh, and I just wanted um, to change that experience for him. And also I knew that that was something that God put on his heart. And I'm like, we got to get it done. And hopefully he trusts me. I just wanted you to trust me. And, I'm glad that you and, and, and that was one of the, she said a few key things in there. It was, a, a, it was really PTSD of like, yo, I'm just tired of trusting people with, because mind you, I didn't want my book to keep touching all these men, all these hands and all of these people. And they have them sitting in their email. They can do whatever they wish with it and stuff like that. So I was I was at the point of quitting it. As soon as he stole that money, man, I, I was really going through a lot. Like, I'm going to kill him. Like, I can't catch him. I don't know where he at. Like, I want to get him. And I'm like, you can't do that. You're a better person than that. That's not your, your, your ways. Um. So what do you do now that you have this problem? What do you do now? that you, you It happened. Now what? Now, do you quit or like you, you, you have a copy like you actually I felt good about this version of my book. I had many versions. People had so many versions of my book, but they don't have this version. And that was why I was happy that I didn't send him a copy of it, because it was like that was the one that I knew was the one that was going to get to the market. And the ones that everybody else, they were baby stages. But this one, I worked really hard on it. Um, so I was about to quit again. And she pulled me up from the slums of like, no, don't like you listen, you got it. Like just, I'm, I'm going to help you go over the finish line. And the, and the analogy I keep uh, looking and I'm glad I'm sitting down that I can um, show it. Um, it's, it's easy to say when you injured to run a, run a race and you run over the finish line. Like, and I got, I got hurt basically. And I could have finished the race, but it's nothing like, and I keep using that analogy. And the other guy that's going to come on later in the podcast, he was the other person. It's nothing like somebody like, yo, I'm going to put you over my shoulder and we're going to run this together. It's nothing like that. Like, of course, I kind of been like, uh, limping over. But it's like, yo, when somebody comes and that's exact. Matt, I'm going to use this one because you're right here. When someone comes and they like, all right, come on over your shoulder. Like, I know you're going to have to get the money up again. I know you're going to have to find the funds to get it done again. But I promise you, if you do it this time, we going to get you over that finish line. And she did nothing but a short of delivering that, that promise to me. And like I said, she was one of the most wonderful persons that came into my life this year to make that dream a reality. Um, but um, <laughs> it didn't come up without hiccups because now I'm on the fence when I'm coming. So the person that's finally here to help me, I'm giving her pushback because of all of the stuff that I went through beforehand. So <laughs> I remember the first interaction, I'm like, all right, I need a, uh, I need a, 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 a editor. And she was like, all right, I got an editor for you. And so I get the money together. I'm hesitant because mind you, I told you I already had three editors before. So I'm hesitant. I'm like, all right, I get the money for the editor. So she get the work done. Um, I'll give her props after her. But she get the work done and I get it back. It was, it, it was in a short, it was a short amount of time. I get it back and I'm like, Debbie, this ain't what I was looking for. And I'm already mad and, and messed up because I'm like, she didn't really do nothing. Like, it's just here and it's no really edits. Like, this is what I sent over. And <laughs> my mistake, I looked at it from my phone. So because I've been so experienced, inexperienced with other editors, I was so used to people not doing it the correct, proper, professional way. So I looked at it on my phone and it was editing, but it wasn't really in depth. So I called her. I'm like, you know what? I knew this was going to happen again. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen again. Debbie. She ain't really do nothing. Like, I don't see nothing. And it wasn't nothing done. And I guess you can speak more about that experience as well. Um, I'm glad that you're bringing this up because, I mean, there are other people out there that are like you that have been burned time and time again. But what happened was Reggie looked on his phone and when you are going through um, your rounds of edits, you go through the process of, after receiving the first draft or the first round where you accept or decline. If you look at it on your mobile device, you cannot see um, the commentary or the feedback of all of the changes. Um, and that is um, where your changes are tracked. We were um, using Word and I like to use Word for edits. And so he couldn't see that. He could only see the clean copy, which appeared like what he actually said so when reggie called me um pretty upset i mean i'm a coach so i'm our, i'm good with talking people off of the ledge and like my blog is called talk it through tuesdays i'm i'm excellent at talking things through. i'm like okay what was your expectation what were you looking for 
have you looked at, you know, the copy where the track changes are? He's like, no, I looked at it on my phone. I said, like, okay. First and foremost, she did hella work. <laughs> you know, and the editor on my team, like she's skilled at what she does. I mean, communications is her life, her passion, her calling. And I said, first, I need you to look at not the clean copy, but the messy one where you can see every marked out, crossed out mm -hmm. word, uh, where things were changed, everything. And I said, secondly, what was your expectation? And, you know, and this is why a part of my workshop and in, in addition to my self-publishing service as well, I let people know what editing is and the different types of editing that there are. And Reggie wanted or thought that editing was ghostwriting, like mm -hmm. someone putting additional information into the story. And I said, that's not editing, that's ghostwriting. And then uh, I had to go into, okay, proofreading is like baseline editing. Like if you got minor stuff going on and we just, you know, add a comma here, capitalize in here. Copy line editing, editing which is what I do um, or the services that I offer or make, making sure structure is correct, syntax, flow, um, word usage, things like that. Just getting everything nice and clean, but still maintaining the integrity of the author's voice. And then the last thing is developmental editing. Like if, um, and that's the most expensive editing, which is developmental, but if the author requests that, then um, they want feedback, they want more to be pulled out of the story, you know, things like that, but everybody doesn't want nor need that, but copy line editing is like industry standard um, for editing service, so I had to break all that down to him, and like Reggie was like, oh, I didn't know what it was called, oh, my bad, you know, it was so like, I was laughing at him on the because he went from being upset to Facebook. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm like, look, go look at your track changes in your editing. And literally, it was that night he finally got settled and was looking at his track changes. And he texted me and said, My bad. She did a lot of work. <laughs> Never mind. I'm like, You have P. And that's why I told him, You got PTSD. It's okay, like you're on edge right now. You're on edge. I said, but you good. You in good hands. And we had to keep going through that. And as things were getting completed and as things were getting done, he saw it was a moment of my word. And to me, that was the most satisfying thing ever. And that's what I aim to do. I aim to please my clients and I aim to serve them. And just seeing him soften, like, okay, I really don't have to worry. Okay, I don't have to be on edge. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that, that was really dope for me, the fact that I was able to uh, kind of breathe new life into this project and get him to believe in it again and believe in who would be partnering with him to to bring it forth so but yeah he was tripping I told him that I was like you're in my you're my crazy Reggie yeah, <laughs> I'm my crazy Reggie that's probably but, gonna be the title of this podcast too like <laughs> my crazy Reggie but um what was the two versions copy line and what's the other one it's proofreading which mm -hmm. is the most basic copy line and then developmental. Developmental. So and ghostwriting is totally separate. That, and that's what I wanted to dive into mm -hmm. the story. And yeah. That's what I wanted to dive into. One of the things that I forgot to mention earlier was that I had reached out to a company to do some ghostwriting for me. And any author, please be aware of this. So I started using some of the concepts because they if if you know about rappers and stuff like that, they have ghostwriters, but it's your stuff. And so he was ghostwriting or whoever was ghostwriting. I paid them to ghostwrite and I started using them within my story. And then when I went to go Google portion of the, uh, put the, the book that he made, I started seeing it online and started seeing it on different places. So I had to scrap that whole, whatever I was going to use from that. I took all of that stuff off because it wasn't, um, what is it called? Uh, authentic. Like it wasn't, it wasn't going to be just my, it's my nice. work. And, I didn't like that. So again, that was another hurdle that I would almost quit. So mind you, I, I told you guys that I had all of these editors beforehand and Debbie was the first person. It's, it's so important. It's so key to find somebody that's in their industry that, that knows how to explain because the people that I was entrusting and no shade or no uh, thing against them, they weren't able to explain to me because if they explained to me what, I was actually looking for actually like sat down and like got to know what I was asking then they would know that I needed uh, developmental editing or stuff like that instead of proofreading or instead of copy line editing 
I needed developmental editing, which I would have paid more, and I wouldn't have had to go to three, four people. I would have just paid that one big boat amount of front, and then I would have had that person in my life. But um, shout out to all of those editors because they did exactly what they thought I wanted. And it's not that's not what I would have, I wanted that whole time. I wanted somebody to be like, all right, well, this could be a chapter, or you can make this a section, or stuff like that. And if that's more developmental, and now moving forward, I have that information, so now I know what to ask and I know what to look for, even though I'm probably going to go right back to Debbie because she understands how my mind works. Because like she said, if, no, when she literally says I was going crazy, I legit was going loony to him because of so much PTSD of having just going through all of that stuff with different editors and stuff like that. So um, it's important to know what you want. So we get we get the edit. Oh, shout out uh, her services. So Shelly Ann. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure I got her name now. <laughs> she is get, my editor. I give her her credit and stuff like that. She's been amazing. So even her. Oh, look, before I even get past her, um, <laughs> she was so understanding. I don't even know if you know this. Um, yes. I had sent the money to the wrong email mm -hmm. through PayPal. Might have just a misspelling or something. I, I misspelled yeah. and stuff. And she could have been so like. Oh, you see, nigga, back people, they always do this. <laughs> like, she could been... So let me tell you about my team. Mm -hmm. You know, it's me, uh, the editor, Shelly, and my graphic designer. Mm -hmm. Even though I did, I finished door cover myself. Mm -hmm. But um, it's one of those things where I don't, I'm not connected to anybody that's foul or nasty. Mm -hmm. I'm not connected to anybody that's unprofessional. So anybody if somebody's dealing with me or they're dealing with somebody from my team, expect excellence, expect clear communication, expect respect, you know, expect understanding and everything. Like you're not going to have CEO. Uh, no, 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 no. Cause that's not how I roll. So nobody connected to me is going to be that way either. I mean, cause that's not how you do business. You know, I'm not going to be nasty to my clients and you know, the people I work with aren't going to do it either. We're going to clearly communicate like big kids, you know, like adults mm -hmm. and we're going to get the job done and we're going to talk through any issues that we need to talk through and effectively resolve them as well. So I'm glad that you brought that up. So I just want to let yeah, you know. I, I sent it to the wrong. Excellent. With I, I sent it to the wrong email and she still did the work. She start, she's like, it's okay. I'm going to start the work. Just let me know what the pay, what's going on with the payment when you get a chance. And I'm like, man, God finally set the blessing up for me to get this. Like, like I said, the image that I always got is like he's carrying me over the finish line. Like, son, I see that you are struggling. You did all that you can do. I'm going to send some angels your way, and they're going to make sure this happened and push you over there. So um we got the editing done um she did amazing work and um just i just want to thank you for your services man like pu publicly and, and and to make sure that everyone know that she's doing great work on her end and she's a, um the person that's probably going to do the rest of my books and stuff like that because of the fact that she she makes your story hers and what i mean by that is she takes the time out to actually draw from what it is you want I, I I would send her like so many edits and she was like, you sure? Is this, this is your book. This is your baby. This is what you're going to have to kind of live with, with the rest of your life. So uh, we want to make sure you don't have any regrets against anything that you putting it out. So it, it didn't matter how many edits, it didn't matter how much like critiques, even up to the smallest little minute details. She was there every little step of every little step of the way. And you know how I said the guy undersold, um, oversold and under delivered. She undersell and over deliver. Like her 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 services is like amazing, and for the price that she's uh, delivering them, like you guys have to reach out, you guys have to connect. And I don't know if you have any parting words or anything that you want to share along the way, or stuff that I might have missed from the process. Please. Well, I want to touch on something that's um, that a lot anybody that I come across, people who DM me, email me, get hop on calls with me. One common factor or a few common factors with authors that um, they also shared that you had as we went through the process, fear is one, perfectionism is another, mm -hmm. and just the concern of inadequacy. Mm -hmm. And I want to let all of the um, aspiring authors who are listening to know that those are normal feelings to have. However, it's so important that you push past 
those feelings because those feelings will leave you paralyzed mm -hmm. and unable to move forward in your process. You won't be able to finish your book because you are tormented by your own mind mm -hmm. that it will never be good enough. Mm -hmm. It will never work out. You will never finish. Who's going to read this? They ain't going to read the crap that you put up. And your mind will just take over to the point where you're in the corner and you have cowered to the thoughts in your own mind. And this is why, like, even when people um, get on with me, especially the self, more so the self-publishing services, since there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one communication through that, it's, it's coaching as well. I've had to talk my people off of ledges, you know, and it hasn't, you know, been just you who has had those feelings of like, dang, like, it's not good enough. Maybe I just need to go back to the drawing board where I'm having to talk through, like, why do you feel that way? What is causing you? Okay. Because we have to separate. Are these legitimate, rational concerns or is it fear and inadequacy talking? And when it's fear and inadequacy talking, me as a coach, as my other thing that I do, I'm not going to allow fear and adequacy, none of that stuff to affect my clients because when I released my first book, I had the same thoughts too, but now my books are blessing so many people. And now I'm like, dang, had I had, you know, listened to those thoughts, people wouldn't be getting the healing that they are getting. And now with Reggie's book and, you know, my other clients, book, it's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. So I just want to put that encouraging word out there that you're not alone and feeling stuck or your mind being overwhelmed with so many thoughts where you're feeling like you're being talked out of your process of finishing the book. Now you got to shut it down. Your story matters. Your story is tied to other people who need it. It is, it's not even about you. Everything that you went through, whatever characters you're developing, all that, it's not even about you. It's about getting it in the hands of the people that need it who've been waiting on you not even knowing they've been waiting on you but they have been waiting on you to put out what you have to say just to you know put a spark in their mind for something to be a key and a stepping stone in their journey and in their process as well so it's super important that you understand that your story has value what you're doing is important and um shut down that negativity man that's why so many i'm telling you it's so many books in the grave because people couldn't get past, man, it's not good enough. Some people been writing their books for 20 years. Mm. To me, that that's absurd to be writing for 20 years. And you know why? Because you could have been done. When somebody tells me they've been writing their book for years, all that tells me is A, you weren't committed, and B, you were doing everything in your power to keep saying it's not good enough. I gotta add more. It's not good enough. It's not good enough. Let me change this. I gotta wait till it's perfect. Wait. And you're gonna be waiting forever. There's never gonna be a right time there's never it's never going to be perfect you know and um the most important thing is taking that step to committing and to moving forward and not backing down from what god has placed in your heart and i just commend you reggie even though like it wasn't even that bad to be honest but you know even though it was a journey and you know there was counsel involved um you overcame and i was i'm happy that i was able to help you in your process just to trust again, to breathe, to believe in your project, to know that it was good as it is and as it was. And you know, there are no lies here, folks. The people who have read it are saying that, that it spoke to them, that it has fed them. Why? Because the integrity of his voice was preserved, which is what I am huge about and what I do. I don't like to, unless it's like, yo, this right needs whole lot of work, you know, unless it's a situation like that, I preserve the voice of the author because I feel like it's important, whatever you were trying to convey in your feeling, through your statements, through whatever it is that you're saying, I feel like that needs to remain untouched and authentic as possible. Um, because whoever's reading it, whatever you were trying to convey, that's going to speak to them, mm -hmm. you know, so, but if I change it or if I tone it down or clean it up too much, then it won't, the message won't have that same feel to it. And that's why I'm very um, serious about preserving um, the voice of my client. So I say all that to say, if you have a book that has been on your heart and you've been too afraid, um, you've been worried about, well, I don't have the money to do that and all this other little stuff, take a step to committing, get on a call with me. My IG is Debbie L. London. 
D-E-B-B-I-E-L-L-O-N-D-O-N. And you can go to the link on my bio and it's ready to self-publish. From there, you schedule a call with me, fill out the questionnaire, and we will move forward and see what which one of my services are um, the best fit for where you are in your writing process, whether you have started on your book or you're completely finished and you're ready uh, to take it to the finish line ASAP. We are here to do that for you. But um I'm just glad you trusted me, you know, and I'm just happy to be the light at the end of a tunnel of many obstacles of day. There are solid people out here who mean well, who are, you know, honest and about service. And like you said, I continue to tell you through the process, this is your baby. Because there were moments where Reggie was like, man, just forget it. We'll just put it out however. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> no. But that was just frustration talking. That was just exhaustion. I'm like, no read through mm. your manuscript mm. what do you want is it conveying what it needs to like what is it and you know from there he's all right there was a moment where reggie wanted to change his book size when he is the one that chose his book size even though we were gonna change it but you know just pick on him there was a moment he was driving himself so crazy but there was a moment where he wanted to change his book size um he chose six by nine and that's one of the industry standard sizes and um he was like, man, I was looking at my book compared to other people's books and I need to change size because it doesn't fit in my bookshelf. I'm like, 619 is like the size of a book. But if you want to change it, I said, is that like, so again, that comparison thing too, you know, that, that falls into feeling inadequate. I'm like, so you're literally looking at your book and comparing it like, what, what, and I'm like, what do you, what, what do you, and then like, after you let it marry, like, okay, I'm trying. Although we would have made whatever changes he wanted to make, no problem. But again, what I recognize is not um, coming from a rational place. Then I start picking and trying to get to the root of what's causing this feeling. And that's where my mental health background comes into, you know, comes in handy with anything I do and any interactions I have with people. Because I'm just able to pick up and recognize, okay, this is a real, real issue or this is a fear-based issue. Like, let, let's tackle it head on so we can uh, push through and uh, move forward. And it was like different things like that with Reggie. And then it was like, man, it's not, man, I just need to be perfect. Man, it's not, man, I'm just put it off until later, man. Sorry. I'm like, what? What? And now that he's getting his good feedback, he's like, it, that, it, that'll help when you get that good feedback and what, to piggyback off of the book thing I'm so happy with the size of it now because you one thing you said it was like all right so if we change the size it's probably gonna be too small when you get it back I'm like you know you're right it probably is gonna be too small because when I feel my book now it adds a little manliness almost to it but the small book I'm like man people won't think it's like a little like pamphlet I'm like you know what just go with the six why not <laughs> like and now he's happy with it, even though we, again, we would have changed it, but I just knew it wasn't coming from the right space and place. And I want people to um, be grounded about their work and about their stories and not feel like they have to do anything outside of what they want to do. Since he told me six by nine first, I'm like, well, that's where your heart is. You chose that size for a reason. Don't change it because you're looking, you know, it's just like, um, what's the analogy? of uh or you know thinking about when michael phelps was swimming or something like that and then this guy was looking over he was so focused on looking at what michael phelps was doing his ass lost but if he was focused on what he was doing you know what i mean he could have probably maybe possibly beat him and it's just the thing of just you know staying in your lane and not looking over at what everybody else is doing because what you're doing you are trailblazing and you are you know paving your own way and uh, that's just how we have to see it in anything that we do, whether it's a book, a business, um, a nonprofit, whatever it is that you were called to do. Don't be worried about what nobody else is doing. Don't let fear paralyze you. Don't talk yourself out of your dreams, man. You got to take leaps of faith. And Reggie took a leap of faith. And by trusting me and it mm -hmm. paid off. So I hope you guys know I'm silent. I'm a woman of my word. Uh, I don't play around. And um, from my virtual workshop, to I have three different services. It's the virtual workshop where you can take on things and you know get it done yourself. And you have all the steps outlined. And I remember Reggie uh, when because uh, since again since he and I had a rapport established, he was like one of my beta um, people for that piece, and that was months. That was a long, long, long time ago when I said that to Reggie because I was like, dang. I know he mentioned want to do a book. Let me see if that's good. He's like, man, this thing is fire. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and it's a long time ago. And of course, it's been 
you know, perfectly fine tuned now and just perfect to now it's a virtual workshop, but those are for my aspiring authors who want to set their own pace and get every single step they need in order to bring their book to completion. Or once you have your manuscript done, those are my self-publishing services. If you're ready for editing all the way to um, getting self-published. And then I also have one-on-one, like if you need like somebody to just support you along, along the way. And that's basically author coaching. It's my one-on-one services. So I got to do it for you, do it with you, and then you do it yourself. So Ooh. whatever fits your needs, again, schedule your call with me, either debbielondon.com or at debbielondon on my Instagram. It goes to the link in my bio, ready to self-publish. Listen, y'all about to see a lot more of her because I'm starting to do uh, ads and stuff on my podcast, and I want to make sure that everybody get their story. Um, I just can't help y'all to do it. She's the person that helped me to get mine, so I'm going to always sing her praises and show her the love that she needs and the support that she gave me. Um, on that note, follow her. Um, and if you have a story, don't ask me, like, Reg, what do you do? She just explained everything to you. Um, she just explained the, her process and what she does. She do it for you. She do it with you or she uh, lets you do it on your own. So, um, you guys reach out to her for any services that you need and, um, she'll be willing. You can hear how much she just helped me with me and my little crazy self. So, <laughs> um, I appreciate you coming back on. I'm pretty sure we'll be doing more work in the future. So we'll, we'll be in touch. I'm sure we'll talk later this week sometime. Of course. all right guys um i'll bring up the next story next what's going on guys um i told y'all i had two special guests this is the second part of it um i had to bring this guy on because he was very instrumental into making sure that the accomplishment of this book happened man and um i was so proud that a grateful i don't even want to say proud grateful and thankful because like i said like i was in um like a dark dark place before I met Debbie and when the guy stole the money and um, I, um, I had posted on social media, like I said, that you guys probably already seen the, the tweets and Mike was one of the people that reached out. So I guess give a little bit of intro of yourself and then talk after you give your intro, talk about like what your, your feedback was when you seen the messages on um, social media. Well, you know, I'm Mike, you know, we met, I'm trying to think, what about like 2013 like 2012 2013 when you worked at love mm-hmm. something like that so you know i talked to you then i liked you i'm like all right man there's something special about this guy i don't know what it is but like i, I like to be around him mm-hmm. then you know just sitting there the one day i'm going through your stories like i normally do and try to like listen to your podcast and then i read that like yeah man like i just got burnt and i'm like mm-hmm. yo that that's messed up mm-hmm like that's not supposed to happen to someone and then you know i just messaged you right away i didn't even think twice mm-hmm. about it and i just said what do you need man let's get this done well before you get into it what is what is it that you do i want to make sure you get some promo for the stuff that you do as well okay you know i'm sitting there and, um i'm studying to become a personal trainer right now i have like a little meal prep thing going on, on the side i'm sitting there trying to get people to sit there and teach them that that if you want to eat healthy it doesn't have to be tasting like cardboard like you can have flavor mm-hmm. you can have some variety it's not just boiled chicken and like broccoli mm. like it's just trying to explore everything and it's just like helping people get into a better place mm. and that you surely helped me go to a better place with because <laughs> i was in a very dark atmosphere when that guy did this stuff with the money and um before we get into the specifics, what was what was your first feelings when I sent you the audio clip that everyone heard just now that of uh, what he was saying over the phone? Oh man, I was pissed. Mm. Like he was so smug about it. Mm-hmm. Money, and he says, "Nah, man, you need something." Like he's want something for free. I'm like, "Nah, man, he gave you money. That's mm-hmm. why I told you ask for his money back." Mm-hmm. No, for real, and he and and um when people hear, because I was laughing on there, but like I said, I was laughing to avoid being angry. Right. And I didn't want to have that type of mentality, but this guy like really pissed me off. So um <clears throat> after I posted social media clip, Mike uh inboxed me and was like, "Bro, how much is it that you need? Like, what's going on? What else do you need? Like, we got to get this uh, accomplished." And I was like, "I need such and such amount of money." 
And he was like, I got you. And for me, I was hesitant at first because, for one, I don't like taking money without a plan to pay it back. For two, I was already in a vulnerable position, and I don't like to make decisions um, when I'm not in a, a, a functional mind state. And so I was real hesitant. And even still, um, you could speak on more on that. Like, I waited a week before I actually was like, hey, Mike, I think I'm going to go with you. Because I really, I was like, well, what was the strings attached? So from your end, what made you offer? What made you, like, want to do something nice and everything like that? Well, I mean, you always got to look for the change in the world that you want, plain and simple. I knew what you were doing. I knew you would pay me back, man. I, like, I know the type of person that you are. Like, I didn't feel like... I didn't hesitate. Like, I'm not the type of person that wants to throw something out and just kind of want to rub it in your face or anything like that. Like, I, I told you, like, I didn't even want to, like, a th like, I just wanted to thank you. I copied the book. And then when you could, just pay it back. And that was it. Mm. I wanted to get your message out there. It was going to happen sooner or later, but I wanted it to happen sooner because as soon as that hit someone's, like, that could change someone's life. Like, someone needed that right away. And then once they read that, like, I love the book. Like, I'm, I, I need to try to finish it. <laughs> Like every little spare chance I get, I do read the book, man. Like it's real good stuff. Listen, I appreciate it. And the analogy that I just used earlier with uh, with, with Debbie was basically like, um, out. And you said it to me too. And it was the analogy that came to mind was like, I'm in a race and I got injured, and I could I could have hobbled along the finish line, like and try to make it. But it's nothing like somebody coming over your shoulder, coming on, like Debbie was on one end and Mike was on the other and was like, no, we're going to carry you over the finish line. Like, we're going to make sure you get there. So, um, that I really appreciate it, but I didn't, <laughs> Mike said one of the most beautiful things. He was like, um, I'm probably going to shit the money off some type of way. Like, <laughs> if it's up to me, I'm, I'm like, I'm bad with money, man. Like, if I can use it for a good cause, like, good money always comes back to you. Mm -hmm. You do it for the right reasons. Like, even if, you know, I'm in, like, a crazy scenario, like, if you burn me, that money will find its way back to me. Because mm -hmm. it, well, it was for something I really believed in. And, and, and like he said, like, I, I, he was like, yo, I'm, I, I, I'd rather invest in somebody or something that I feel is going to make a good cause of it. So, like I said, I really appreciated the you coming on and, and, and sharing that and doing that. Um, what is your viewpoint of the book so far? Like, so far, it's like, like, I've read, like, self-help books and everything like that, and they're, like, they're all hokey. It's all the same nonsense. It's just, like, you just got to do this. Make a plan. Do that. Blah, 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 blah. You'll be successful in a month. And it's just, like, all a bunch of, like, bullshit, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Like, can I curse the cool or? What? I don't want to sit there and just start swearing, then you got to sit there and, like, bleep me out a bunch of times. <laughs> nah, go ahead. Yeah, but it's just, like, you read it, and it's, like, I, like I got to know a little bit more about you and then like the struggles and like, I can actually relate to a lot of these things. Like I know how you felt like just like you wake up and you're just miserable. Like, why am I doing this? Like you can't do this. And I just been using that as my fuel to sit there and do what I want to do. Cause I have to work another job. It's like, tw it's half my day pretty much from the time I, w I get up, drive to work, work. And it takes like almost two hours to get home and I can't do anything in those like, three hours of driving it's horrible so Which, that's that's my suffering to get like because it really makes me want to sit there and just like get into it so i don't have to sit there and like wake up miserable anymore and give a little bit of your story because we're going to do more work in the future as far as like what was going on but how did you get out how did you got into fitness and how you got into it like what was your basically almost like suffering story well this is pretty much i was almost I was getting close to 300 pounds. And one day we're at the playground. I'm running with the, well, uh, running with the kids. And I was, I was just out of breath. I was tired. Like everything just ached. I said, I have to do something. Like this, I'm not supposed to be like this. You're not supposed to feel like this. I woke up depressed. And then when I like, when I was depressed, I wanted to eat. And then, you know, and eat made me fat. And then I felt depressed because I was fat. And it was just a vicious cycle. And then I'm like, I have to do something about it. And it took me almost two years, but I dropped over 105 pounds. Mm. Congrats, man. Like, that's a huge feat. And to actually um, be able to stick with and be consistent with something like that is, uh, is, like, hard. Like you said, it took you a while, but you was able to keep prevailing, keep going through your trials and tribulations and not give up. Because 
I think you said um, certain people used to say, like, yo, I'm, you're going to be big like that forever. Like, it's, you're never going to lose that. Yeah, there's doctors that are sitting there telling me, like, you need to take these pills. This is the only chance you have to do this. And I'm like, no, like, I don't, I don't believe that. And, like, you know, when you were sitting there talking about doctors, like, they're so quick to give you a pill, they don't want to actually try to help you. Mm -hmm. and, and I think a lot of people in that industry forget that that's what's going on. Like, it's, it's, as well as people, people out there to help you, like how the guy was, quote, unquote, supposedly helping me, um, he, certain people are out there just to take advantage of you and just to make a profit off you. That guy that got to me, he walked away free with money, like, and he knew it was nothing that I could do with it. He's not in Philadelphia. He's nowhere near close to me. So it's nothing. It was no paperwork. It was no legal binding uh, documents. It was like me being trusted. Just like Mike just entrusted me and was like, all right, I'm going to invest in you. I entrusted him and you get burnt like that. So, like, you, you, I'm, I'm so grateful that I had somebody like uh, Mike or Debbie in my corner to be able to uh, help me with what I had going on, man. And I don't know, Mike, man, you're a blessing, man. And the fact that you was able to make that cause and even to get the book and receive the message, man, it, it's so un, it's so phenomenal and believe, unbelievable, man. Not a problem, man. Like I, look, I already told you too, man. If you weren't going to take the money, I was going to find a way to get you the money, plain and simple. <laughs> Just like selling meals. <laughs> like we, we were going to get this book done this year. That was, that was the thing. Yeah, and the fact that uh, – you really believe because I Mike could have it was a week before and he could have been like, Oh man, you missed your chains, you missed your mark. But it was like, No, nah, I got you, kid. Like, and and he was like, It was no strings attached to it. It was like, It's no strings attached, it's no, it's not because I'm always thinking, like, well, What does he want from this or what does anybody want? And you mean, what? You said, well, what do you want from this? Like, no, no one does this. I said, well, The right people do. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to be that person where uh, you block your blessings because you're so building that wall up of like just used to so many people. And um, <clears throat> earlier in the episode, Debbie described it as like PTSD. Like you're, you've been through so much traumatic situations with this book that it makes you uncomfortable when blessings start coming your way. And it makes you not want to trust people. It may, like I had to regain my trust. There's no way that someone steals a certain amount of money from me and then I'm going to expect you gave me the exact amount. Like it came right back. Like it was like, I never lost it almost. And right. a blessing like that to come, it don't, it just don't feel right. And, the, and to have that divine intervention or the divine, like this, I swear God be speaking through people and was like, yo, I'm here. Like you just got to believe. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, like I said, I can't thank you so much. And um, is there anything you want to share with the people or you want to get out there? Because um, we're going to wrap up the episode. But is there anything that you would want to get out there? Man, you, sometimes you just got to look for the good in the world. There's always a silver lining. Mm. Something bad, but something even better happened to you. And it's just like when you're really, really in trouble, that's when you find out who's really down for you. A hundred percent. He he couldn't have said it any, any better. Like you, you really find out who's around, who's gonna be there to support you. And um, he got his copy of the book. Listen, I haven't been promoting as far as like me saying anything. I'm probably getting into it now because it'll be a month of the date of me getting it out there. But I'm happy that you're receiving the message and you're receiving. Um, every, what's one in particular story in per, uh, in per se that you can remember that you related to that could been that you felt everyone probably could benefit from? But from your book? Yeah. It was just, uh, let's see here. When you were sitting there just talking about work and like how you just wake up and like, I'm not meant to do this. Like I'm not meant for some person to tell me what I can and can't do. Mm. And it's like, that's just how I feel. It's like, if, why am I going to give you 135% and you're not even going to say thank you at the end of it? Ooh, that's deep. And then you can sit, you know, and they can sit there and like, oh, you know what? You can't work here anymore. And now I can't feed my family. Now Ooh. I got to go out and go do. No, for so, real. That that's exactly that, what it is too. And I, um, it's two concepts that I talked about was uh, constructive suffering and destructive suffering. And it's like, all right, people suffer. Sometimes you have to suffer for a purpose. Like for example, getting in the gym, like yourself, getting into fitness, you're going, putting your body through all that pain, agony, agony and hardship, but it's for a good cause at the end of the day, a healthy life, a better looking body, um, more more energy to run around with your kids and everything 
but then we go through destructive suffering. Whereas, like you said, with your kids, like, um, like I can't run around and it's like, you're or at a job and you hate the job um, that you're at, but you don't do nothing about it to change the, the outcome of it. And right. um, um, I just wanted to express that point and the fact that you're going through the transformation and you're, you're, you are the epitome of what it means to suffer into success. You went from a place of suffering in one body and going through all this hardship and then transforming into something and to like who you being today, like, and, and it's phenomenal to see the transformation. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you coming on the platform today, man, and um, sharing your insight and sharing your story. Um, tell people where to follow you at and um, anything, any parting words that you want to uh, give on to the people. All right, man, you can sit there and follow me. You can follow my business page on Facebook and on Instagram. It's the same thing as no gimmicks performance. Mm. That's what I believe in. No gimmicks, no bullshit. It's just, it's hard work is, is what it is. You can follow my personal Instagram and that's going to be Maz underscore of all underscore trades. And you know, it's just, you, you got to work for it. If you really want something, it's going to take a lot of work to get it. And there's plenty of people that will help you along the way to make sure you accomplish the goals that you're trying to achieve. You just got to put yourself in a position to do it. Yep. Sometimes it ain't, it ain't the good ones, but you know, you, you got to thank them for the journey anyway, because they just sit there and they put you in even a better direction. Like, all right, well, I, w I went and did this. Now I know who's really down for it. And like, I, I would trade money for that any day. A hundred percent true friendship. Uh, I, I was just actually over there playing with your kids the other day. Amazing, man. Like that's amazing energy that they had. And like I said, they just saw you and they're like, hey, what's up? <laughs> Running around the team with you. My son gave you a hug when the Eagles lost. <laughs> I was a little upset because you going to give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, um, you guys follow him. Um, I put his links and all of that stuff in the bio so you guys can keep in contact um, for all your fitness needs. Um, he's, he will be probably one of the trainers that I get. And I'll be that physical transformation that you guys can see of suffering into success physically why because that's one of my goals for next year in 2018 uh 2019 um to really live a, a, a healthier self-disciplined lifestyle and um mike i thank you for coming on i thank you for the blessing that you sent my way man and i promise it will not go to waste i promise to praise your name for everywhere i go and bring your story along the way i appreciate it man like i said i'm just, i was just glad to help like you didn't even have to do this but you know you wanted to do it and i appreciate it and look, thank you for coming on, man. Not a problem. Thank you for having me, man. I want I want to sit there and do it again. Have another right. show. We got you. We going we I'm sure it's not the last time. We'll be working together soon. All right, man. Sounds good. All right. All right, man. So now you guys per, uh pretty much see how much stuff that I had to go through. So many how many people it took for this book to come to fruition and um just from the guy stealing the money from uh, going through so many editors, not to the fault of them, but to the fault of me not knowing uh, what actual differences between uh, editing was and um, just needing that extra help from Mike as well, um, as well as Debbie to like just push me over that finish line and just to go through so many trials and tribulations, man. Um, that just proves that as much as you think um, the road to success is going to be easy, it's it's not as long as so many twists and turns and um you may have any uh, had mental issues along the way as well as myself i went through anxiety with um not knowing if people were going to receive the book well i'm so happy to know that people are receiving the book well and the fact that people are um receiving the message and understanding my viewpoint of what i was saying and where i was coming from i'm so happy that um people are just like improving their lives off of it as well um, I went through depression when that guy stole that money and um, my headache started getting bad and I started getting the pressure like right in the back of my head um, and just feeling just down and low because um, that was money that I could have used for my family and money that I could have used. I just had a baby. I just, my son was in school. Like I could have been, Christmas is coming up. Like Christmas is right now. Like that money could have went so many different places and for a guy, an older gentleman, an older black gentleman, it almost made me distrust my own people because it's like, well, if you can't trust an older guy to lead you and supposed to support you, who can you trust? So I had trust issues for a little bit, like um, 
depression, anxiety, just stressed out, just trying to find ways to make the money again. Um, insert Mike, and he supplied supplying the money to make sure the book just get across and get across the finish line. Um, just so many just mental issues within yourself that you go through. It's it's crazy. So it was a journey, and I, I felt that it was necessary to uh, bring this on this platform and for people to understand the the process of uh, the struggles that it goes behind um, writing a book or accomplishing a goal because the bigger issue here is accomplishing a goal is not going to be easy as everybody may make it seem like you're going to go through some struggles you're going to go through um, some pain some heartache and that's at the crux of my book where suffering into success is going to be some suffering like and you, you have to embrace it and um, speaking of the book I figure I give you guys um, a free uh, excerpt from it so that way you can kind of understand the context of the book and what you could expect so um, I thought that I'll read um, one of the first chapters uh, one of the first you only get one first chapter <laughs> the one of the chapters I should say and to give you guys some context of it so uh, so suffering into success is the name of the chapter and suffering to success what does that mean exactly as simple as this concept may seem, it's one not many people fully understand, including myself at first. The goal of this book is to break down the concept of suffering and success and to change the outlook of struggle. If you Google the definition of suffering, you'll find that it means the state of undergoing pain, distress, or hardship. When you Google the definition of success, you'll find that it means the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. Merge both meanings together in the definition of suffering into success becomes the state of undergoing pain or hardship for the accomplishment of a pain, uh, of an aim or purpose. Simple definition, so in the book, right? Well, not just yet. Suffering is dependent on the entity's perspective that is feeling the effects of it. Is a caterpillar suffering in its cocoon if its greater purpose is to become a butterfly? Likewise, success is dependent upon the individual's goals and dreams. Is a person who has many kids any more successful than the person who never wanted kids in the first place? It may be a simple definition, but the concept is definitely complex. And that's basically the intro, the definition behind the suffering into success for people um, that wanted to know what the name behind the table, the, the, the definition behind the title means and um, I guess I'll read you guys the back of the book, too, to give you that uh, connotation of, like, because it's a really good book. And I do say to myself, that uh, Debbie has read it, read it. If you guys follow me on social at Reginald A. Howard, you'll see that a lot of people are, um, I'm reposting a lot of people who, who are receiving the context of everything and understand the message and purpose behind it. Um, but I'm going to end off on this, and you guys just go out there and get the book. Once every few years there's a book that shifts thinking and beliefs. Its sole purpose is to dissect your understanding of life and offer a new concept to achieve happiness. Reginald A. Howard's Suffering Into Success is one of those books. In this life-changing read, you'll learn how to embrace your struggles so that you can turn your failures into fixtures. Suffering into success is the state of undergoing pain, distress, or hardship for the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. As simple as this notion may seem, it's not one that many fully accept. From Joseph's story in the Bible to every entrepreneur working to execute their dreams, most of us have experienced the feeling that is suffering to success. But naturally, people tend to run from their struggles because of the pain they have to endure instead of welcoming the discomfort. The goal isn't to dehumanize suffering, but to change the perspective of it. This book will break the concept of suffering into success down into digestible information so that you can change your outlook of suffering in your life. The reward at the end of the tunnel should, be, should negate the agony that you have to undergo to accomplish your life goals. By using the lessons in this book, you will learn how to use your struggles as your strength so that you can achieve your version of success. And that was good, right? But <laughs> um, basically, this book is me, man. If you follow my journey, follow my story, this is all me. This is any, everything that I've been through and all of the lessons that I learned along the way. And by no, no means am I at a place of success and um I'm, I'm actually wrote about that in the book so let me de demyth that now too um when i first set out to write this book i didn't really want to do it because i felt like i was still in a suffering stage 
I thought people would feel like, who is this guy to tell me what success is if he's still suffering? But I had it all wrong, and so does everyone else if they had the same thoughts. Yes, I have suffered, but I'm still, I still am successful. Remember, um, suffering, success and suffering are subjective. Um, to me, the fact that I'm even writing this book is a, is a success because it's al- it already separates me from people who are not author. And that's simply like that. So get the book, um, subscribe to the podcast, um, follow me on social at Resume Howard. And I, um, I like to thank my guests for coming on today, Debbie London and Mike Mazzoni. Um, and just really just thank for you guys for your support and all your things that you guys done for me. And I'll never, I'm forever grateful and I'm forever indebted to you guys. Um, follow them on social. Their link will be in the description. And yeah, just go get the book. And and on that note, remember that this podcast has never been about replacing therapy. It's a place where people share. It's an alternative. And it's a place where people share their therapeutic story. Thank you for listening. Go get the book.